Evening, everybody. An educated economist here. So I had a great discussion with Mike Martins last night. We did a live interview on his show. Uh, had a wonderful time doing it. It was about a half an hour long. I suggest everybody please go over and check out the interview. It was a great time. Uh, please like and subscribe to Mike Martins' channel. And thank you again, Mike Martins, for having me on your show last night. That was great. I would love to do that again. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Mike Martins, he uh, he's really into the housing market. He's, this guy pulls articles from all over the world, uh, talking all things uh, real estate, and uh, he is really on his game. So yeah, check him out. Um, thank you again. I uh, thought I'd come out tonight and talk a little bit more about yields, right? I know you guys are hearing a lot about yield curves from me and, and different things like that. So I was going to leave it alone, but I have to I have to tell you about this article that I read earlier. So it goes something like this. If you're not familiar with yield curves, yield curves generally are low term, uh, low interest, long term, higher interest, and that's generally how these bonds are sold, right? So the treasury yields are uh, effectively have a low to high interest determining on the, the length of the uh, duration of the bond. What ends up happening is an inversion where the shorter term ends up paying a higher interest rate than the longer term. And what this is signifying is that real uh, investors are are nervous about the time period in which those those inversions are taking place. So for an example, we have an inversion between the one year and the seven year. And what that is saying is that in one year, uh, investors are very nervous about about the, the next year. And they don't want to tie their money up during that time period, right? So they're asking for a higher interest rate. Okay, so what this economist on Yahoo came out and said, and this, or he's not from Yahoo, he's from uh, Wells Fargo, I think. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I'll leave a link in the uh, in the description for you to look at. And this is what he had to say. Um, there, basically, an inversion of the yield curve has signified a recession dating back to 1969. Right now. There was two recessions where an inversion of the yield curve did not take place. Okay, and it was 1950 or I'm sorry, 1957. In 1964, I, I'm pretty sure those were the two dates in which these recessions took place and there was no prior inversion of the yield curve to take place before these recessions. So he looked to see what indicator happened in 19, you know, prior to 1957 that would signify or uh, say that this there is a recession looming. Right? And the only thing that he could come up with, or not the only thing, but the one thing that he found was is that in 1954, the Fed fund rate had actually dropped to 0.68. Okay? So, and I haven't, I, I just read this article, so I haven't done a whole lot of research on it yet. So I, I may have my numbers just a little mixed up here, but I'm pretty sure this is right. He said that the Fed fund rates went to 0.68 and that the inflation right after that was about 2%. And he said that is very similar to what has taken place right now. He said basically over the last few years up until just recently that we had about a 2% inflation. And he says, so these are two definite indicators that may be prior to a recession that doesn't typically exist like the inversion of the yield curve has dating back to 1969. So you guys kind of get that? So back into 1969, basically everybody since then has looked at an inverting yield curve as a predictor of the recession. And what this guy is saying is that in 1954, there was no inversion in the yield curve, but there was a similar circumstance in which the Fed fund rates were dropped down to this near zero, right? I mean, you think about it, the Fed fund rate dropped down to zero to 0.25 of a percent and 0.68 is twice as much as that. So it's actually quite a bit higher in percentage rise thinking but it was a very low fed fund rate okay so it would make it very similar to the case that we have going on now right? and then when he said that two percent inflation is is also similar to the situation in which we have going on now these are the indicators in which he was thinking that could be prior to the recession all right so i know i kind of repeated myself there i just wanted to make sure i got it clear thank you very much again please go check out mike martin's channel check out the interview it was a great time uneducated economist thank you very much talk to you later